oh my god my dog harry just farted and it absolutely stinks hey i'm lizzie welcome to lizzie's week welcome back to my channel i hope you are well today i have another book for review la, 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 la. and that book is the best things by mel gedroich and life are free don't tell me you didn't think that when you saw the book title <laughs> anyhow today we have this i want to say comic novel it's very thick yeah quite chunky but like the writing isn't that bad if you can see it there there's a lot going on in this book but it is damn funny i really enjoyed it but i've seen really mixed reviews online it's just come out in paperback and i thought i'd get my review on this done this follows the life of the parker family so we have sally and her hedge fund manager husband frank children cleo stephen and mikey and then their kind of you could say adoptive daughter who is their niece emily she's a really smart one and then all of sally's kids are just a bit dumb or just a bit quirky should we say starting off they live in the wonderful leatherhead region of surrey in a gated community just think really big house a pool ride on lawnmowers spirally suitca uh, <laughs> suitcase staircase got your staff you've got your seven dogs or whatever and it's just super clean sally can go to the spa go see her friends just do anything she wants and doesn't have to worry about work frank works in the city and he has his own hedge fund with his business associate amajit singh and there's his wife laura now as i said there are quite a few characters there's lots of a lot going on in here and it follows them where surely nothing good can last when you've got that much money it seems too good to be true where one day on the day frank chooses to lie in because he's so tired is the day the market collapses and as you can tell from there from the book sally parker is losing her grip this is because everything goes downhill from there they live in the uber extravagant cedar vale i think it's called and their life just crumbles right from there frank is like so exhausted he's really burnt out and he chooses to over oversleep at home and his associate amajit on the other hand he's trying to deal with this mess but he can't his wife laura's just left him and then he goes mad and he starts stripping off in the city in front of his work colleagues frank on the other hand people at his work are trying to tell him what's happened but he's trying to brush it off and he has no idea what's going on his life then starts to crumble around him and his families as well at times it kind of did seem a bit predictable but at the same time you don't know what's going to happen just because it has all collapsed so bad they've got all this money and then they literally come to nothing and it turns out frank he's good at business and sales and stuff but coming to real life he doesn't know Shh. as it turns out the family have like soon lost everything frank's lost all their money turns out the house they live in isn't even theirs frank's been like not lying to sally but just not telling her the whole truth he's been renting it so they can't even like live in their house or sell it to get any money back and it just shows like really from here on the best things in life are the small things that are so undervalued so underrated and money cannot buy they've all got used to the finer things in life but now frank is so tired all he does is sleep and apparently he's been diagnosed with narcolepsy whether this is true or not i don't know there are a few loose ends at the end of this book which is a bit frustrating which doesn't make it a full five stars for me anyhow even though sally is losing her grip she decides it's time to take control her true friends make themselves known such as Janice who cares for her dogs or is kind of in love with Sally. And then there are her rich friends uh, in the Leatherhead area. There's Francesca, Tim Daly Jones. This probably means nothing until you read the book because there's just so much going on. There are so many characters and I think that's what makes it a bit of a mishmash. Even though it seems all the Parker children are a bit useless, it turns out from the very start, Mikey or Michaela, their daughter, has an idea. She's very business savvy, but that she's always getting talked over. Then there's Cleo, who's a bit dumb, but she's head over heels in love with the neighbor. And then there's Stephen who's a bit podgy they're always taking the out of him for his weight but then it turns out he is a perfect chef and they all pull in together to make sure they can pull through this together it does seem a bit of far-fetched how they like stay in I think it's a pool and the golf club or something but if Sally's trying to control it and t maintain her grip I guess that's what you got to do I said before like there is so much going on it becomes quite easy to lose track of the characters and what they're doing where they're going such as Amajit he's gone crazy he's in this hospital and then he comes back then he goes crazy again and starts taking his clothes off again it's very strange and then we don't find out what happened to his wife Laura is he if he is divorced or whatever not so much is said about the hedge fund like what's happened to that what's happened to the staff Sally is basically mad at Frank throughout the whole of this book and there's also the dwelling of Bronwen Frank's mum and his brother Kyle who comes back from traveling he says but he just seems to be as bad as Frank and is all talk and just tries to convince people that he's something that he's not they're pretty much as useless as each other and Sally's trying to take control and her kids do just as well and you know what they're not that bad I found it quite funny their little characters from the very start it becomes clear what their personalities are like it's very demanding they kind of act a bit entitled and spoiled but it turns out you know what they're not that bad 
It's the kind of thing I could see as like a sky comedy because there's so much that's far-fetched and going on. I guess it all comes to this end where Bronwyn is on her deathbed and she wants her children there and they seem to have forgotten her because their heads are filled with money. Anyhow, the kids head there, Amajit goes there, Frank ends up going there. As I said, there's still a lot of loose ends like left untied like not a lot of it is explained such as there's a tense relationship between emily and frank emily as i said is the niece and she's not seen as a true daughter i guess and sally she gets some work the kids they're just as savvy minded and they're actually all right with sally she kind of has control like she maintains it a bit but they all seem a bit dim however they do get to bronwyn on time just before she dies and that's another thing there's another character dr livesey or livesey i don't know why he popped up but he was in hospital when frank was there with his narcolepsy and then he was gone i don't know if he's a bad guy it's so strange there are a few that pop up in the book and i just don't really know where they went i don't know if this leaves room for another seat like a sequel or something or if it is literally showing the small things are what matter in life and it doesn't matter if you come from money if you're super poor you can always make the best of it as long as you change your mindset yeah, I like this novel. The characters are good. I mean, those little loose ends did bug me a bit. However, overall, I really enjoyed it. I raced through it. I got through it in less than a week, which is pretty good for this chunky novel. But yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of what to expect from this book. Sorry if this video is a bit clunky. I'm trying to remember everything that happened. Oh, and the light's just gone. But yeah, thank you for clicking on this video and watching this far. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you want. That would mean a lot. The light's coming back. But yeah, thank you for your support and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.